you were saying that 7% of dementia happens in guys 40 and 50s. It's a genetic thing, and it just happens. And that's what happened to Bruce Willis, I guess. I mean, you don't know his case, or maybe you do, but that's kind of the indication, right, that he got this genetic dementia. The dementia he has, this frontotemporal, which it says where it is in the brain, that kind of dementia, it certainly can be genetic, and that's very worrisome. You, you know, at the same time, get a load of this. This is the wildest study ever done. Google bought the Ancestry.com database, and they sequenced all the genes, and they said, hey, listen, let's find the gene for longevity, because I want, you know, they wanted to make people live longer. And what percent of longevity do you think is genetic? You tell me. Four percent. Four. Oh, oh really? Four percent, which means... 96% is in your control. That to me is the most positive study in the world. You in wow. charge of your own health. So the genetics only count 4%. That's it. Right. It's your behavior. You're in charge of you. And I think that's powerful. Listen, dementia is horrible. It is one of the most difficult things to watch in a loved one, but we can't measure this organ, the brain at all, right? Yeah. We don't have a way of looking at brain function. That is very accurate. And there's a problem there. Probably the most important organ in our body to define us as a human, and we can't measure it. We don't know how it works. I don't know how the brain works, and that's very frustrating. And so most of these dementias, the Alzheimer's and the others, we don't really know yet why they happen. We can't really understand them. There's some amazing observations, and this is one that I talk to you about all the time, is Every year you delay retirement, you reduce the incidence of Alzheimer's by almost three and a half to four percent. So a 20 year span, that could be a 60 to 70 percent reduction in the incidence of Alzheimer's. You need to make yourself uncomfortable every day. You don't use it. You lose it is real. Make yourself uncomfortable going to work. It challenges your brain. But you're right. These guys retire and then their brain turns to mush. We all know that people who are functional to their 90s and whatever, they're engaged. They don't have to do their primary job, but they're doing something that gets them out of their comfort zone. And that's what's key. How many people retire and just sit around and play golf or just, you know, watch TV? They don't do very well. I look at Mick Jagger. The guy's almost 80 years old. He looks to me like he's in really good shape. He moves around like a young man. He goes into dance studios and dances every day, he dances around. That's got to be difficult at his age, but it probably keeps him young. It keeps him, you're right, it probably does something internally by pushing past his comfort zone. He's engaged. He has enough money, I am sure, to retire, but he doesn't do that. He keeps pushing. Every time he has an album out, he puts himself out for potential failure. Right? That always has to be scary. Every artist that comes up with something is afraid that somebody won't like it, right? And that gets that adrenaline going, and he gets uncomfortable. He keeps doing that, and that's what keeps him going. Every time you do a show, you, and Robin, you put yourselves out there for people right. to potentially criticize it. And that uncomfortableness, if you will, is what keeps you engaged and going. And that's important. 